Mondragon and its history. History is the daughter of its time, daughter of its generations of men and women in the same place. There is a relevant prehistorical time in Mondragon. In fact, the most ancient human remains in the Basque country are located here. It belongs to a woman of the Heidelbergensis species from the Upper Paleolithic period. There are also records of the Neanderthal and Homo sapiens. Lesetiki and La Becocoba are two of the archaeological sites that give testimony of these presences. And other generations followed them. Vestiges found in Murugain give us proof of an Iron Age. Strange as it may seem, we know more about prehistoric times than we do about the first 1,000 years of our era. What we can prove is that Romans identified the dwellers of this valley as members of the Caristios tribe. In the Middle Age, we know that Arrasate was within the realms of the Reino de Navarra, period which left a castle at the top of what today is the Park of St. Barbara. Around 1200, Arrasate came under the rule of Castile, and in 1260, King Alfonso X granted the letter Puebla de Mondragón. It changed the name and received the same charters and privileges given to the recently conquered Vitoria Gasteiz. Those charts are also granted acknowledgement of its customs, the exemption of duties on iron, and gave them power of election of the mayor, among other questions. With the Dark Ages depression, starting in the 14th century, the villa comes into a cycle marked by great lords, the factions, and the royal objective to settle its absolute power. By 1353, the current municipality area of Mondragon is practically formed. The neighborhood surrounding the walled city center suffered considerably more the factional conflicts, so they sought protection becoming a part of the Municipal Council of Mondragon, sharing its rights and duties. The factional wars, during the Great Crisis undergone by Europe in the late Middle Ages, have probably left the deepest trace in the villa over the years, a hard, long-lasting conflict between the Guraya and the Bañez belonging to the factions Oñacinos and Gamboinos, respectively. The burning of Mondragón by the Gamboino supporters, with the help of Count of Oñati on the eve of St. John in 1448, was an epic episode. Practically all the walled city was in fire, and tragedy took place, including the death of the Oñacinos leaders. From then on, the Castilian royal authority consolidated its domain over the factions, releasing Mondragón of these quarrels to a great extent. In 1533, Esteban de Garibay was born in Mondragón, perhaps the most remarkable personality Mondragón has given birth to. He was chronicler and historiographer of the court of Philip II, and among its works, it is worthwhile mentioning the first written history of Spain. In the modern age, Mondragón already was a relevant industrial center because of its foundries, reason why it was visited by the kings. As a result of this prosperity and of the political development, the Council of Mondragón decides upon the constitution of a new city council in 1755. The end of the 18th century and the first two decades of the 19th century 
are marked by the two French invasions. The first one, ephemeral, takes place during the war of the French Republic against Spain. It hardly lasts 40 days, whereas the second one lasted for five years and falls within the occupation that the Napoleon troops carried out in many localities of the Iberian Peninsula. It is believed that Napoleon himself was in Mondragon, where the French troops had the general command of the region. Both Carlist wars will be especially relevant over a great part of the 19th century. Mondragon is a Carlist emplacement, defender of tradition and charters, which will later mean that it was in the defeated faction, bearing the consequences resulting from it. On the other hand, within the interwar period, the embryo of what once would be its powerful metalwork industry saw the light. In this century, Mondragon became remarkably famous for its waters. The health resort of Saint Agueda was also visited by illustrious personalities, such as Queen Elizabeth II, government presidents and ministers. In 1897, Canovas del Castillo was murdered there during his stay by the Italian anarchist Angiolillo. From that moment, the resort started its decadence. The 20th century is undoubtedly a tumultuous period and at the same time a period of great industrial development. On the one hand, the civil war with its precedents and consequences on the other, the creation of the company Unión Cerrajera and the further cooperative experience. In 1934, the so-called October Revolution or Octubrada shaked the villa. Mondragón was one of the main scenarios of the riot. The revolutionary faction took the power centers which will result in the death of four people. As for the civil war, it created an atmosphere of stress and violence. Hundreds of people had to leave their homes and many were the deceased resulting from it. The war left an open wound in further years and a great repression was inflicted by the winners of the Franco regime. The economic history is no less interesting. Since the creation in 1906 of the Unión Cerrajera, it became a significant milestone in the villa. It is a company which will mark the life of the population because it became the most important company in Guipúzcoa. By the middle of the century, another entrepreneurial initiative will become a key factor for the understanding of today's Mondragón. We are referring to the cooperative experience boosted by the priest, Mr. José María Arizmendi Arrieta. Mondragón will know an unprecedented socio-economic growth and will be known worldwide because of its entrepreneurial model. As we can see, Mondragón has a rich history in every period which has given form to its identity and its own ways.